Hey. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Welcome to Knitting in Our Jeans. All right. Ouch. I'm Liz. I'm Carolyn. And we're having some technical, uh, <laughs> not difficulties, just confusion. Yes. Um, so we'll try again. Yes. Yeah. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as to Liz for you, T O O L I Z Z F O R Y O U. And I'm C P R E D M O R on Insta uh, on <laughs> Ravelry and Knitting in Our Jeans on Instagram. And I thought I posted my latest breathing space, but I didn't apparently. Yeah. I sent it to Crafter Gamer Geek because he is where I got the yarn for my breathing space. Mm -hmm. um, but I will post it. So, okay. Uh, if you remind me, I will post it I will when we try. get off. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so we are at Vogue. Um, <laughs> great. Uh, we're at Vogue. Uh, today is Saturday evening. Yes. Uh, so mom has had six classes. I've had four classes. Yes. And one lecture. One lecture each. Um, I think only the same one. Lecture. One. The lecture was the one where they hit some technical difficulties. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But um, they got it straightened out. They and did. It really and it was a, a great, great lecture. Lecture. Yeah. Um, I would take a class from her. Yes. So. Yes. Um, but yeah, so that was great. And then we've, so those are the classes we've done. We've done a lot of socializing with some we friends, have. which we, is we, awesome. You know, friends that we see maybe once, twice a year. Yeah. You know, Rhinebeck, uh, India Untangled, and here. Um, and it's been great fun. Yes. You know. The, the, we see them, I see some of them a little bit more often. Well, but. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, and then we've been out to dinner twice. Yes, and we've been to two Broadway shows. Yes, both were excellent. Yes. We saw Wicked last night, mm -hmm. and we saw Sweeney Todd tonight, right across the street. So it was wonderful. Yes, um, I will tell you the theater seats are a little tight it, for um, Sweeney Todd. For Sweeney Todd, the Gershwin, the, the Gershwin seats we had. had were all palatial time. yes so there was no problem with knee lock up <laughs> after yeah. the show um really we've had a great time we've had an absolutely yes. excellent time of my six classes well i was gonna say five we were wanna, excellent i was gonna say do we want to first talk about our knitting and then okay. we'll talk all about right. vogue all right all right so what have you been working on this i've week? been working on my dress um yes my dress Mm -hmm. which is a compilation of two patterns yes a henley top and then a ribbed uh skirt mm -hmm. and one of the classes that i took today i thought had a fascinating take on a sleeve so my thought is to rewrite this or actually write up a new pattern that is a henley top with this kind of bottom but using the different sleeve Okay. And uh, we'll see if I can get around to doing that. So okay. I'm very excited, but I've been working. I have just an ooch left. This Not much ooch. left of my Cozy Color Works, yep. which you know was 2,400 yards. And this is all I have left. Yeah. I'm going to use it all yeah. because I'm 70 years old and mm -hmm. I don't need to be wearing mini skirts. Um, although this stands out, I think. I think it's better to have it a little bit longer. Okay. And that's what I'm comfortable with. Good. So, um, what have you been working on? I've been working away at the baby blanket. Um, so, I am four squares from being able to pick up the I cord edge. That's fantastic. <sighs> yeah. So, and the baby's not here. Baby's not here yet. So, a uh, friend, that's friend doing is, really friend well is for still you. pregnant. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, but that's some yeah, progress. I was gonna say. So I've been knitting on that, and then my, I actually pulled out the second sock of my Woolens and Nosh 2022 Advent socks, um, and started knitting on this last weekend. Or not started, but I was uh, maybe started. I was in the I was in the pink stripe. My socks um, under there. Oh. Uh, well, I was in the pink stripe uh, when we went to a party uh, last weekend, and uh, uh, by the end of it, I was at the heel insert, so 
I stopped uh, and then we ended up going home. Uh, so over the week I've done the heel and set up for the decreases and I've gotten this far during dinner uh, or Broadway show lunch intermission. Broadway no, shows. I've been I've been bringing the if we've stayed at the hotel, I've been bringing the blanket. Well, but that if makes we've sense. Left, I've been taking this, so that will hopefully that will get done this week, and then I will have another pair of DK socks. Excellent. And then I can pull out my other ad my this year's Advent so uh, sock, <laughs> you know, selections. That sounds like a plan. Yes. Okay, now yes. what? So now, uh, what did, you, so Vogue Me Live started Thursday. Yes. And we were here. And right we early. were here. Yes. And we got into our room early. Yes. Yes. Which was awesome. Which was awesome. So that we were able to put our luggage in our room mm -hmm. and then go to the first class. Yes. Which was Tally, Design Knitwear Like a Boss. Safia. Yeah. Safia. Safia. Safia Tally. Who on Instagram is Drunk Knitter. She's fantastic. Yeah. I would take Great a class. class from her anytime, anywhere. Um, she explains things very well. She's very personable. Um, and this was how to design knitwear. And, you know, how, how do you go from being a maker to a designer? And um, it was really focused on the process. The process of it and not necessarily designing a garment it right. was like right. how do you look, how do you actually go from an idea to a product that's right not so much how do you design design design, design. Right. what kind of sleeve you use and all that yeah. kind of stuff this was very much on the process of being a designer and how to how to make a pattern right right yeah. um and really spelled it out which was yeah. very nice and said we could contact her anytime with questions yeah. so that was great yeah and then did you have a class after that i did, did i took i took helix i took helix knitting magic which is these stripes that go around and around and around but you don't really until you stop or start it the whole thing you have you don't really see the jogs. So they are truly circular knitting. Knitting. Um, and I took this class because I want to um, do this technique for the nurtured um, sweater by Andrew and Mallory with my skeins of Miss Babs. That makes sense. Um, because I have two skeins of big silk from one of one colorway and one skein of another. And so I think I'm going to split off about 30% for cuffs, collar, and hem. Mm -hmm. I'm debating, yeah, 30, probably 30%. And then the others I will then do in a helical knitting style um, okay. because then it'll at least blend a little bit. And also I'm a little tight on yardage, so that'll help. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I'm tight if I don't use all three skeins. Right. But um, yeah, it's. Okay. I took uh, Goberstein woven slips. Oh, and that was with Patty Lyons, if I didn't say. Uh, no, you didn't. No, well. Uh, Goberstein woven slip stitch knitting. And let's see if I can find my. Swatch? Swatch. This, yes, this is one of them. Basically, she was talking about doing slip stitches and leaving your floats on the other side. Now, I think it's this way. Yes, it's this way. And it's interesting. I think it makes a very pretty pattern. Yeah. But I know me, and I will catch every single one of those those floats and i will have a pull mm -hmm. in my garment so as much as i like what the idea is mm -hmm. this is not not uh, a future design a process that works well with my lifestyle which mm. is running into everything I so see. um yeah we did a couple of these here they are Yes, 
So this is another but one. But it's that hat we both made. It's similar to that hat we both made. And so if you can see these, these have diagonals going off. Yeah. And then this one's pretty. It's got diagonals going and mm -hmm. meeting. It's very oh, pretty. It's pretty. But I'm going to catch those floats. So mm -hmm. if you have live a life where you don't catch your sweaters anyway, maybe that's for you. It's not for me. Um, it's interesting. It's very, it's very interesting. It's very pretty, but it's not going to do well. As I said, it's not going to do well with me. And then we uh, left those classes at five o'clock and met up the two of us to see Natalie Warner lecture one out of many one and one out, out of, of many. many and it was how to take an idea and play with it and fill with it and play with it and fill it lots of swatches to see how your idea plays out and then all the different things you can do to set up a collection mm -hmm. as a designer she apparently sets up collections so she'll have a showstopper that has all the bells and whistles like the flowers and the beads and the collar that kind of thing and then she'll take a sweater and take out of that that maybe you'll have the collar and slightly different sleeves or she'll take another sweater that's simpler and maybe has the floral pattern but not any of the more um, exotic collars she'll make mittens she'll make a hat she'll make a scarf with some elements of that design and that'll be a collection and I thought it was pretty interesting I mean she showed us her different swatches she made something like 18 swatches for yes. one idea mm -hmm. and she said you know take this you know, make some verticals mm -hmm. maybe make a fatter make a maybe separate them it was very, very interesting. Yeah. So it was an excellent lecture. It yes. was too bad the um, projector lost it its mind for a little bit. It did, but it got it back. They finally, mm -hmm. they were pretty good this year in terms of getting help for getting it back. And getting tech support help, yes. yes. And we enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. All right. Uh, Friday. And then, so Friday, I didn't have any classes. It was my birthday. Mm -hmm. So I decided to give myself the day off. Because uh, I was like, yeah, I'm going to want to be hanging out and around. And then I remembered that on Friday, nothing happens <laughs> except for classes. Right. So I... Not as many people come in on Friday. Yeah. Because many people are working. Yeah. So I um, treated myself to a facial uh, at uh, Mario Badescu. Badescu. Um, this is probably backwards, but you know, um, and because I really like, uh, some of their products. So I was very excited about that. Seems to be doing okay. So yeah. Um, except, I mean, you all can't see it, but my forehead's breaking out a little bit, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. She has very sensitive skin. Yeah. Yeah. She may look like a, <laughs> like a hearty soul and she may work as a project manager I may be a hearty soul but my but skin is very skin sensitive it's very sensitive so anyway I went to class yes and I had Bristol Ivy all day oh god I it's like my life changed um let's see if I can find that oh please god it's that one oh, it's this one yeah. all right so what Ivy had us do is design our own lace and she swears that in the space of six hours we did a master's level class in lace in a fine design school so this is the lace i created and i've done 32 rows of my first and only 16 rows of the second half of the design but basically this was using a code to put in to in inter not intersect inter to impose into my knitting so with this lace i used the phrase nevertheless she persisted bristol was having us use a base eight so the whole alphabet's written out and you just do numbers one through eight one through eight one through eight um and the 
number of the letter tells you where to put your yarn overs. Mm -hmm. Now, some people's, many people did not use a 24 um, letter, letter phrase. phrase. She started out by telling us to use an eight letter phrase. And then she said, you can certainly use a 16 letter phrase. And then she said, but I really liked it when I used another, you know, um, support the women's movement phrase. So I thought, nevertheless, she persisted. And I, I and it was nice that it was 24 letters. Because it's divisible so by divisible eight. By eight. So um, I was able to put my yarn overs. And then you count how many yarn overs you've made in each row. And you make sure you have the same number of decreases. And then you knit a swatch. Well, I love my swatch. I absolutely adore my swatch. Um, and then she talked about how we transpose it and how we flip it in order to get width mm -hmm. on uh, the swatch and how you get it to change. So um, by flipping it and transposing it, you can get your... Uh, spines or your columns, your fans and feathers mm -hmm. to move. So they're, they're going kind of like this mm -hmm. and you end up with some really interesting parts to your pattern. So I thought, well, I think I've got a design here. So then I went out and I thought, call it persisted or persistence and make it up in a Barbie color that I bought from Asylum Fibers. Which is called Barbie Pink. Barbie Pink. And we'll see if anybody else thinks it's wonderful. I, honest to God, I thought it was life changing. We'll see if it is. Um, I will tell you that, knowing that I was planning on doing this after I finished my dress, my dress really does have priority after I do my, finish the uh, miniature sweaters that I'll be showing you in a little bit that I did today. Next comes finishing my dress, then doing my persistence um, cowl. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll follow the, the um, instructions of Safia to see about getting it published. So we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm incredibly excited about it because the lace pattern is really fun. Um, it doesn't get boring because it keeps changing. I have a 16 row repeat um, and I don't find that I can remember it. So I can't imagine anybody else can, uh, but so I'm, I'm very excited. We'll see how this goes. Anyway, so I had Bristol Ivy all day, six hours. Mm -hmm. I could have had another three, except for I've got this, now this muscle cramp in the back of my neck. <laughs> And she's very aware of it because she was telling us, get up, stretch, and she's showing us different exercises, which I'm going to have to start to do. Um, she has various music playlists already pre-set up, so we listened to her Friday playlist all day. Apparently, she listens to a lot of Irish music <laughs> and New Age music on a Friday. Uh, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it so much. Good. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm lit. Can you tell? Yeah. So, and then our men met us for dinner. Yep. Uh, we went to Dos Caminos. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Wicked. Wicked. <laughs> we saw Wicked. On her birthday. It was so good. Um, I have wanted to see it since it opened uh, 20 years ago. Um, but I had... A friend of mine and I had always said we were going to go see it together. Um, and then she recently saw the traveling or the the national tour production. Um, so that gave you permission. So that gave me permission to come see it. Um, I will go. See, I would happily go see it again with her uh, when she's in the city. Um, again, it was great. It was phenomenal. Um, I, it's an extremely strong cast. The show is just beautifully staged it is the set is phenomenal and the gershwin is a wonderful theater oh, um they have escalators they have escalators so escalator access to all of all the floors, floors. 
and very wide aisles in the seats within the uh, rows, at least on the mid mezzanine level, right. which is where we we had tickets. Um, they were extremely spacious um, and great sight lines. Yeah. So everybody's might. I mean, this yeah. is not old time Broadway where they had to project their voices out beyond the proscenium. Everybody's might. So you could hear everything. It was easy. Being that high up, we got to see everything. There was there was no blockage of sight lines. Mm -hmm. It really was fabulous. Yeah. Now prior to that, we had nipped into the marketplace. Yeah. Because the marketplace opened Friday. At Friday five. at five. So that's where we went. Before our lecture? Yes. yes. No, we went after lecture. We went after the lecture. No, we, no, went, we went before. Before lecture? I think we went in for that oh, okay. 25 minutes. Okay. And that's when I bought the Asylum Fiber. And we kind of uh, yeah. chugged around to see mm -hmm. what else we were interested in. No, um, the lecture was on Thursday. <gasps> that's right. It's like, hard. we didn't run to a lecture. We were running to dinner. We right. did it. Did we before did run dinner. through before dinner? Yes. Okay. Um, and you got your yarn. I did. Uh, and I just made a list of people I wanted to stop back at. So today I did stop back at some, and I will stop back again tomorrow. We'll tomorrow. Um, I have a friend coming in uh, to take a look at the marketplace, and so I'll meet up with her and mm -hmm. walk through again. Um, but yeah, with, so that was yesterday. So that was Friday. Yes. Uh, and so that brings us to today, Saturday. Um, so today we had, I had steaking with Mary Jane Mucklestone. Uh, oh, you've had Mary Jane twice. No, no, no. I had her this morning. Ah. Uh, I had Patty Lyons. Sorry, Patty Lyons. Yeah. Um, at uh, and as you all saw when I showed you off, showed off my homework, I had a swatch to steak, and so I steaked it. And since it is grippy yarn, my crocheted steak is holding. But look at how good my crochet is. That's fabulous. Like, look at that. That's great. Aren't we? We are very Show proud. Them. We are very proud of um, the. The crochet. consistency and the crochet, and it looks really good. So that was that was good. Um, she walked through kind of Jameson's yarn does really well mm -hmm. with this because it's also very sticky yarn. Yes. So you don't have to get very thick yarn. I mean, you use thick yarn, but really yeah. the main requirement is sticky yarn. Yes. And Jameson's uh, mm -hmm. from Great Britain is very sticky yarn. And it mm -hmm. works very well too. We learned that from Amy Dutchin. Yes. Um, and so it was a refresher for me. Um, she walked through, you know, kind of the the history of steaking and the history of Morphera, which if you know of Mary Jane Mucklestone, you know that, that is something she is very passionate about, which is wonderful because she just wants to share that knowledge. Um, and so that class was really cool. Um, and it just, there was a, walkthrough of you know you can use a machine to do this you can do it hand stitched and you can do it by by crochet and here's the reasons you would use one over the other um mary jane mucklestone is not one to use superwash or non-wool fibers herself however she understands that others do so she discussed you know best practices with those yarns um, and the one I practiced was at, in the class was the crochet, um, just because that is typically the one I struggle with. Um, uh, okay. but I think for the sweater I am anticipating, I will have to stick in a swatch because I, cause that was the other thing. Mary Jane was like, you know, you just got to figure it out. You got, so guess what? Yes, watch, and you know what you can do to your swatch? Steak it. Right. So I think that's what I'll end up doing, just so that I have, so that I have the confidence that it's not just the data driving it. It's actually a practical, mm -hmm. a, a practicum as well. That yeah. sounds good. Yeah. 
So what did you take this I morning? I took Chris Berlucci, who is from Brazil, mm -hmm. and she was doing contiguous knitting. Um, and so we did, so this is, again, um, doing top-down sweaters. Actually, she said she does top-down and bottom-up. And we did miniature sweaters. So this is where we start out with 20 stitches. We did two rows and then we um, knit two and then did basically a thumb, yarn over thumb cast on to do the one stitch in between to end up with 30. Which, which then, I think is the backwards, backwards, backwards loop. loop or yes. the E. Yes. Um, and she said that was Elizabeth Mm -hmm. Zimmerman's style, which is fine. And then we basically went to what was a very common raglan sleeve setup. So mm -hmm. that was easy for a contiguous mm -hmm. knitting. And then what I'm working on right now, if I can find my needle, there it is, is what she calls a fake set in sleeve because you end up putting in a shoulder. Mm. So you have your collar, help. You have your collar, you have a bit more of a slope to your sleeve, but then it breaks out and you get your raglan there. And I, I really think I like this a lot. So I was thinking of using this kind of sleeve on the dress pattern. Mm. Yes. So anyway, I had this class today and as usual, well, not as usual, but in this case, there was more classwork to be done than could be fit into three hours. Mm -hmm. So I'm very busily trying to finish my miniature uh, sweaters here. So I've got mm -hmm. like five more rows on the body. Then I go back and I pick up these sleeves in the example, she wanted us to knit it flat and then sew it up. But And she likes to sew mm -hmm. her sleeves, sleeves okay. because she thinks it gives her fewer holes. Okay. Because, you know, often you'll get a hole, okay. like right here somewhere, if you mm -hmm. just pick it up. Um, but I haven't, had, their own. I haven't had that problem. So I'm just going to go and pick it up with circular needles and knit them. But I really, I, this was very, very interesting. Um, so I enjoyed that class. And then we ended up back together. Yes. And we took uh, advanced short rows with uh, Gudrun Johnson. Yes. Um, and so we made, we, we did a kind of deep dive, I guess, uh, into some uses and into different uh short row types yes um so we made a tiny sweater top back, and this is my back and then the yeah front. this is a front i only made one front um and so instead of doing the stepped bind off you do short rows right and then you can sew those together and that and, works really well and looks And I did really a three needle bind yes. off and the pearl side yep. so it I did hides too. the the seam. Yes. But she was showing us, Gudrun was showing us um, a winter hat mm -hmm. where she had three needle bind off on the knit side yes. because she wanted that ridge mm -hmm. to follow um, the hat. And so yes. we had a, quite a discussion of uh, wrap and turns and leaving the wrap because um, sometimes as you do a design. it because sometimes you do it as a design feature sometimes you do it just because it's not necessary to pick it up as in garter stitch right um, and sometimes uh, you just pick it up forget it or forget it or you yeah. forget it um, so that went really so that was interesting Fascinating. Um, it was also a good discussion of like the uses well it wasn't this and also not necessarily the um interchangeability of short rows but it was the mechan the act like, yeah, the, like well but also the actual mechanics of 
what is a short row. And yes. so you could, now with this knowledge, you could extrapolate and put a short row in wherever you want. So we Or exchange a type of short row. We made a collar, so mm -hmm. here's the front of my collar. You can see because it's short, and then the back mm -hmm. where it is long. And for this, we used German, German short rows. Mm -hmm. And so she was showing us how you, you how you resolve resolve them so that they don't show in your knitting. Mm -hmm. And I really couldn't see them. Well, and also then how you resolve that last one. Yes. Uh, when you're in that the round to continue back out. in the round. It's a pearl and you're picking it on, on the knit yep. side. And then we did the Sunday. The Sunday short rows, yes. Short rows. And I can't see my short rows I can't at either. all. I marked this. it. I, I put a stitch marker on it. Where's, where is that? I... And it's absolutely amazing. It is a variation of the Japanese short rows. The Japanese short rows, you uh, mark where you're supposed to do your, sh your turn with a stitch marker. And you pull that to make kind of an intermediate bump that you can mm -hmm. then use to fill in the hole that mm -hmm. your turn has caused. Well, with the Carol Sunday method, you use just um, a scrap yarn. And uh, Gujan felt that you distorted your wool less using a piece of scrap yarn. And I swear, I have never seen yeah. anything like this where it just completely disappeared. Yeah. I'm in awe. I may do this all the time. And, and then we went on to have, you know, bus starts, you know, mm -hmm. versus increasing and giving yourself extra width. Mm -hmm. with increases and decreases over mm -hmm. your bus to instead give you extra length over your bus mm -hmm. so that your sweaters don't ride up so you actually have more fabric to prevent the ride up. She mentioned that if you're knitting a sweater for someone who does have a tummy and they don't want their sweater riding up to again uh, use short rows in order to give them more fabric so that they don't have the sweater right up. Yeah. Um, rounded hems. Mm -hmm. What I think of is kind of Saturday sweaters or Saturday shirts with the shirt tails mm. um, that short rows would make an excellent, uh, would be an excellent use mm -hmm. for making those shirt tails. And then she, again, she showed us uh, a winter hat that she had specifically knit sideways so that she could use short rows. So it's, you're only limited by your imagination. I mean, the the my I my sock pattern uses short rows. Like this this heel is a short row heel technically. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't use any of the short row types that we discussed, but but okay. maybe you want to try the Sunday method. Maybe it'll be less stepped or something. No, I don't mind. I like. I oh, like. Okay. I like. Also, because this the way that they have you do it for this is like it's not interruptive to okay. your to your knitting? to your Pattern. sock knitting. Okay. So yeah. Piece of hair on my face. Oh. Um. But yeah. So we did that, and then uh, which was great. Yeah. Which was absolutely well, great. But before that, we had had lunch that had been interrupted by a call from Richard because. Dad was supposed to come in and meet us to go see a show tonight. That's right. We were going to see Sweeney Todd. Yeah. And we told him, well, it's kind of got a dark theme to it. You might not appreciate the story. And oh, by the way, the it's theater, in an old theater was built in 1910. And it's not going to have escalators like we had for Wicked. And mm -hmm. the seats are going to be really tight. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't get him an aisle seat. We couldn't where he could put his feet out in the aisle. So, but he said, "No, that's okay. I, I don't want to come, and I'll I'll sit in the middle seat in the mm -hmm. middle of the row. It'll be fine." Well, at lunchtime, he said, "I can't do this." And so, I said, "Are you sure?" Mm -hmm. And he says, "I really can't do this. I'm okay. I'm okay from yesterday, mm -hmm. but I can't do this." Mm -hmm. So we said, "All right." 
and we found one of our knitting buddies mm -hmm. who came with us. Yeah. And that, that was lovely. We missed Richard. And we did ask Ben if he wanted to come, but oh, he yeah. had other plans. Yes. So. And it was great, but I can yes. tell you the seats were very tight because my knees hurt by intermission just from being constantly, yeah, you know, curled up. Under you. Under me. Mm -hmm. Um. But I could stand up, and I got out of the theater, and I you could did. go up and down the stairs. I was very sure to hold on to a banister mm -hmm. because they they were hurting. Well, I was going to say, if Dad had come with us, I would have just told him to sit his butt down, and we'll wait until everyone else leaves, and we'll go at the end. He would have been in pain. Oh, I know. Uh, and because when I called him when we got back to the room, he said he'd been hurting all day. So there was a lot more walking yesterday because he went and met Ben and then they walked to the subway. They walked down to into the subway. They got into the city. They came up from the subway. They went down a flight of stairs into Dos Caminos. They went back up. We went five blocks to the theater. Thank God the theater, the Gershwin had escalators. escalators. Otherwise, we would have had to carry him out. Anyway, he, his knee was really bothering him. Well, so he is... made the right decision at lunchtime. Yes, but then we had to find someone to take that ticket, and we did, and it was great. We did. And we all had a great time. We had a wonderful time. We missed him, but we had a yes. wonderful time. And, I mean, Sweeney Todd is one of my favorite shows. I had a great um, time. I'd never seen it before. It was wonderful. The fact that it's one of my favorite... Like, I'm pretty sure you've seen the De Johnny Depp ver like the Johnny Depp uh, movie version. I'm... I have not seen Sweeney Todd. <sighs> I could have sworn you had because it is one of my favorite shows. I've not seen um, Sweeney Todd. And it's it's great. It uh, great. I would suggest anyone go see it. Um, we did end up seeing it between uh, when Josh Groban has left earlier this month and then beginning of that, or yeah, early next month, um, Aaron Tibet is coming in. Um, as well as Annalise Ashford has left, and I can't remember who is coming in as Mrs. Lovett. Um, but we had Jenna um, DeWall. She was great. As, she was great. Yeah, we had Mrs. Jenna Lovett. DeWall as Mrs. Lovett, and we had Nicholas Nicholas Christopher as um, our Sweeney. Sweeney Todd. And was it was great. phenomenal. He was great. Uh, we got to see uh, Ruthie Ann Miles as the beggar woman. Um, and she was nominated last year for a Tony for that performance. She, and she was, was phenomenal. Wonderful. It was wonderful. Um, it's, it's a weird little show, and I just love it. Well, well performed, well sung. I think the staging was really good. The staging was it great. It was, like, kind of minimal. Very minimal. Which was great. Like, that was, that was lovely. But it was perfect. Yeah. I'd say. I'm um, so glad you enjoyed it. I had a great time. Um, so we can yeah. scavenge the marketplace again tomorrow. I mean, I, oh, bought... I was going to, I forgot to say, I went to the marketplace and I bought things today. Well, I went to the marketplace and I found a kit for a sweater, mm -hmm. but I, my plan is to now, since I have so much yarn at home, uh -huh. and the only thing that really set this sweater apart was the use of ribbons on the button band and the collar. Mm. It was a Chanel like, um, jacket. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my eye out for ribbon, mm -hmm. uh, chiffoni. I was going to say, you could even look from, they might have just a skein of it there. I can look and see. You can look and see. But I, with my ideas for design, mm -hmm. it makes sense for me just to design the sweater and use the yarn I have at home. Yes. Okay, what did you buy um, today? So I bought a conditioning kit mm -hmm. from... Thread and maple for our um, binders pages. for our pages and our binder. Um, so it comes with a it comes with an instruction card. It comes with a microfiber cloth and a buff pad, which is which map which has a leather match, um, and then it has. So, saddle soap, and then wax. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, I'm 
very excited about that because um, some of my pages have scuff marks. Oh, I mean, they are. Mine are well scuffed. Mine are well scuffed. So I was like, let's just give it some love and, you know, take care of it the way you're supposed to. All right. All right. Um, so just so that it doesn't wear too much in one area. Uh, and then yesterday, a friend of ours showed me this skein. It was under $20. That's gorgeous. And it's based on this photo of the Statue of Liberty and the, the sky. Oh my goodness, who's this set? This is um, Symphony. Huh. Yeah, it's really pretty. It's um, and it comes with the sock head um, hat pattern, but I think I'm gonna make socks from it um, because it is superwash merino and nylon. So I think That's I'll really wind that up and that will be a pair of socks. I think you're going to have to show me where that is. I will. Put it's it on, on the, five. On the list. It's right. on five. All right. Um, and then I got some embroidery threads. You were talking about that. Yeah. Um, so these are from Storyteller Stitchery. And I got a pale. What is this one? This one is... Cottage core, and this is Grimm's Fairy Tales. Very nice. Uh, I just thought they were both really pretty. I haven't exactly decided what they're for, but I also really like that they came on these large uh, kilt pins. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so yeah, they and they've got some cute embroidery things, um, and they've got some good looking yarn as well. But I wasn't. I I was drawn to the embroidery thread. I mean, it's such beautiful hand-dyed silk, so. It's gorgeous. Yeah, so that was that, and I do intend on making a few more. I'm going to <laughs> put the crinkly away. Um, but I do intend to make a few more purchases tomorrow. Um, okay. But not, not a ton, just No, I few. think maybe that New York, New York, Maybe the only mm -hmm. thing I buy. Um, I'm. I've been. I've been eyeing maybe a few skeins of yarn. So we'll see. Um, you have to remind me of what I will. that is. I will. Um, but yeah, other than that, we've had a great time. We've had a great time, um, and it's been a lovely VKL. It has. Uh, and it's been a lovely birthday weekend. I'm glad. So we bought the tickets you did thank yes. you so um well it was also broadway week as we had mentioned last time we recorded so that um, helped so that helped and also i mean that helped you go yeah we're doing all of the broadway <laughs> yeah um but well and even though dad's in pain you at least got to he he was said he was really happy he came in well but he also really it was easy show. and it wasn't it wasn't overly difficult to get from our place to no it was in so like it we wasn't. could and once he has once he has the surgery we knee, can we can he'll start, be much better yeah yeah well i mean but you and i can also go see things that he won't want to see oh so. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely um but yeah other than that i think that's about that's it that's about it it Wish you were here. What yeah. can we say? Um, so we will talk to you all again next week. That's right. Bye, y'all.